Vicky Wall, tell us a little bit about why you're here today. Yeah, I suppose so we're here today in um, solidarity with the senior, intermediate and junior um, LGFA and Camogie intercounty players, I suppose just to, to make a statement that for the remainder of the 2023 season we'll be playing under protest. Um, we've asked and the state of play report has been released um, nine weeks ago with an ask for the NGBs to sit down together and collectively come up with a solution for a minimum standard agreement for a charter for 2024. Um, hasn't been listened to and as players we're just not willing to, to wait any longer for, for an answer. And what does a protest look like? Um, I suppose it's something that we hopefully won't have to um, come to. That's why we're here today um, collectively uh, to, to ask the NGBs to literally sit down and talk to us about solutions. I suppose we haven't even got to the stage of looking at the solutions because we haven't been given the opportunity to. Um, but we, we, want to, um, we want to solve it. We don't want to have to protest. We don't want, don't want to have to be sitting here on a Monday um, before our championship games this week doing this. But I suppose it's just it's a necessity at the moment. The GPA has reached out to the, the GA um, and at the minute they're saying basically until there's an integration that their hands are tied. Yeah, I suppose so. The response from the GAA in Camogie has been that until integration it won't be looked at. Um, there hasn't been a response from, from the LGFA since uh, an official response of those from the LGFA, um, which from our end is, is hugely disappointing um, and disrespectful, I think, to, to the players that, you know, minimum standards that we're asking for that our male counterparts receive that we're we're not getting um, as elite athletes in, in this country. I think it's, it's disrespectful and I suppose, unfortunately, we're following suit from the soccer and rugby players in this country that just ask asking for equality. Can you give us some examples of maybe the inequality that you faced within maybe the Mead Ladies setup? Yeah, I suppose not even just from a Mead Ladies perspective. Um, we anecdotally we were talking today about, you know, junior players being training on a pitch full of rabbit holes and tearing an ACL and you know that's that's the one story that we hear and I suppose even f from our own perspective lack of travel expenses lack of access to, to facilities this year pitches and things like that and it's not for a lack of trying from our county boards because I know there's ser they're all volunteers and there's serious commitment on their end but I suppose it's lack of guidance from the top lack of governance um, which is hugely disappointing and I suppose the county boards tides are hot hands are tied at the moment um, and it's just you know it's, it's affecting the, the playing group of intercounty players at the moment. And what do you get in terms of mileage and expenses for, for travel? Uh, zero, zero cent per mile so we don't get any 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 travel expenses for um, for from Mead um, from, our, from LGFA or anything um, I suppose there's one player grant that we receive at the end of um, the league which is from government grant, grant um, from the GPA that player playing members will receive but um, no, we'd, like on a monthly basis or a weekly basis we wouldn't receive um, playing expenses. And I'm sure you have a lot of girls that travel straight from work, straight from college, probably driving an hour, an hour and a half sometimes to, to get to trainings and they're probably out of uh, out of pocket essentially. Yeah, I've no I've no doubt that people are out of pocket. Um, and I think sometimes you know in Meath we talk about look we're not too bad we're we don't travel too far. But then in comparison to counties like Cork and Galway, when people might be travelling two or three hours to training, but then we have to kind of stop ourselves and switch that narrative to the male counterparts from our clubs that are travelling the exact same distance are getting expenses and I suppose just switching our mindsets and just demanding things and making sure that. Future players, future under 12s, girls from Des Moines, Rototh, Ashburn, and Meath, wherever they are in the entire county, country, that they are getting these minimum basic standards when they come in. And in terms of playing facilities, then, um, what has that been like? Do you, you normally train in Dungani, or has that always been the way, or do you just have to look for pitches now? Um, I think at the moment, um, and we've seen a lot of different counties, that it's too dependent on change in personnel, um, so that it's too variable, that it's not solidified every year where you're training, or it's not solidified what's going to happen. It's a lot of a lot of dependent on goodwill and good people in, in, in um, chair, chairperson or positions. Um, the start of the year, um, obviously, look, I, I haven't been in the Meath panel all year, but they were really struggling for facilities, for pitches, you know, really reaching out to, to people every single week, you know, every training, trying to figure out where you're going to be training and, you know, back pitches with very dim lights and things like that. It's just not safe, just not, not, not fair, not right for people to be training in those positions when they're putting in the same amount of time as, as our male counterparts. That's so shocking. You're the senior All-Ireland champions. Not that it should be like that for you and not for, for a junior team. 
you know it is quite shocking to, to hear those statements and just in terms of maybe food after training food going to games would you get all of that sort of thing we do get um i suppose food after trainings and then after games but then again it's a comparison to the for joy of that you know there's a nutrition allowance on the male side of things to eat weekly for for food and things like that so it's just again look it has improved of what we get we're senior all ireland champions as you said so i've no doubt that there's junior teams that are are struggling to be fed after after games after trainings and maybe be compromising food and nutrition and gear for things like SNC and things so there shouldn't have to be a compromise it should be minimum basic standards from junior to senior to whatever grade you're in terms of supplements that's obviously a huge part of the game as well now do you get anything like that protein anything we, we do get protein yeah we get protein supplements but again like it's, it's tough speaking on behalf of us as se- yeah. senior senior players when like I know factually that there's teams that don't even get food so it's again like we're not looking to for our standards to be thrown through the roof and keep increasing in terms of our food but it's like if there's junior teams not even getting food they need to be on par with us and then it's the next step of getting on par with the men as well absolutely and then just in terms of gear then as well would you get money towards boots no no money towards boots or anything like that or just any apparel so i suppose camogie we don't get anything towards um hurls or helmets or things like that which are obviously hugely expensive obviously if you're breaking hurls week in week out um uh, yeah, no, we don't don't get expenses in that end. And what is the gear situation like? Um, well, I suppose this year any returning members to our panel wouldn't have got. We would have got new playing shorts and socks, but we wouldn't have got any other apparel in terms of like bags or gears and stuff like that. Any new playing members got the stuff that we would receive last year but it's not I suppose until you might be winning or getting to the very latter end of the championship that you'd get more gear. And then just for you then personally obviously you've came back from a professional setup over in the AFLW so you have seen what it's like probably to to have a full setup everything um, at your call. What has that been like to come back to setups like this now? Um, yeah, I'd say in some senses it's definitely frustrating. Um, I think you, when you, you look at it and compare and the conversations I've had over the last few months is that it's very, very similar effort that you put in. So like the same hours, almost nearly different times of the day you'd be training, but as in like you're still putting in the same shifts and might be doing gym by yourself, but it's it's still the same amount. And then, like if if we if I was compare it, like I hurt my baby finger in a game over in Australia, and I had an X-ray and things done the next day, I was sorted out physio, blah blah blah. But then over here, you know, you could have a serious injury, and you're out of ser- you're waiting a good while for an MRI because we don't have straight access to that. Then you could be waiting longer for recovery, and you're not allowed to train them with the injury process of the claims and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's just small things like that that add a huge amount of like personal stress and things to games that can affect people playing a game that you kind of don't realise as much and take for granted maybe when you're in a professional environment. Yeah, you obviously play because you love the game. Has there ever been a situation where you thought or players around you have thought, I can't do this financially? It's not possible. Look, I suppose I, I, I'm in a position where I haven't, but again, that's that's to the testament of my family and friends around me that like, you know, would have been driven to games and obviously wouldn't be out of pocket for petrol and fuel and things like that. But I mean, like we we know factually and anecdotally that the, there's players that we know of that have stopped playing because of financial burden. Like, and that shouldn't be a case. Like, if you're good enough to be representing your county and to the highest standard that you actually can in in Ireland at this sport, like, is it shouldn't be a case that just because you're if you have the talent that because you financially can't afford that you're forced to make a decision like it's a really sad state of affairs do you think there is players that don't play because they just can't 100 percent, yeah 100 percent. yeah that's shocking across the board and for you then obviously you're you're looking to the championship now this looms in the background it, does it affect the play do you think no i don't think it does i think the fact that every single one of us are here today like across camogie and football like in every conversation we've had in the in the last few weeks even organizing this like there was never a doubt from people coming here today to represent this this really big issue like as in like there's other things that maybe you push this aside during championship and say no like we can't at the moment you want to be focused but like this is not even a case of a of a maybe like as in everyone was here today 24 captains made themselves available on a monday morning when people have work people have things to be going to so like i think that shows how serious the players are about this topic yeah it was a very very powerful statement i think everyone can agree on that and then just in the mead setup at the minute obviously there's change in management at the minute well, you've Jenny Rispin that's stepping back in, um, obviously a long-serving player herself, and you stepped in at manager at one stage as well. 
So could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so Jenny's back in as our interim manager, which is great. Um, obviously, I would have been there previously when Jenny would have stepped in as an interim manager. So look, change happens and we have to adapt as a team. And like, we're just really looking forward to this weekend and the game ahead. So look, we're, we're happy out in the camp. Yeah. You just felt like you needed a bit of change? Yeah, yeah. so Jenny, Jenny came back in and helped us out. So look, we're, we're happy out. Yeah, so it's all systems go now? All systems go, yeah. And then for you, you'll go back over to the AFLW? That's the plan at the moment anyway, yeah. Brilliant, thanks so much. Thanks, Ash. Tom Parsons, can you tell us a little bit about why we're here today? Yeah, it's been three months since we presented the State of Play report to the national governing bodies, that's the GA, the LGFA and the Camogie Association. And unfortunately, we haven't seen any really engagement in addressing the huge concerns that female inter-county players have today. And, you know, it's all in the, the report in terms of the gap in standards. So over the last number of weeks, you know, we've reported back to the, the captains of both the, the Camogie and, and ladies football on what's the progress, what's the update, is there any appetite in terms of addressing these significant challenges that there is and the gap in minimum standards and unfortunately there hasn't so the players have got together today um, and they wanted to put a very strong statement out that they'll play the rest of this season in protest until there is action and until we address the minimum standards. I have asked a few of the players what that protest might look like they're hoping it doesn't get to that stage so what do you hope to, to hear from the, the organisations and what sort of time frame would you like to hear from them? Yeah, just hope that in the, in the next number of weeks or days that we, we hear feedback that we want to get down and we want to sit around at a table and really address these concerns that, that the players have and close the gap and put some initiatives in place that male and female players are treated equally and tr treated fairly. Listening to the players today, you know, we, we hear players talking about a passive strike already and that's where players can't afford to play the game. They can't pick up the bill to pay for fuel. They can't pick up the bill to pay for the physio or to pay for the nu nutrition bill that comes along with being an inter-county player and girls are act actually opting out to play with their inter-county team so it's a very significant issue that needs to be addressed so in the next coming in the coming days we want the governing bodies to get around look at the resources look at plans and initiatives that we can put in place in the interim we know that the ngbs are working hard towards integration but that can't be we can't players can't wait two three four years for integration to happen before their concerns are addressed in terms of minimum standards it's an amateur game we strongly believe and the players strongly believe that players should be treated fairly and equally. And what has the response been from the LDFA and the Camogie Association? Yeah, look, we presented the, the State of Play report to the Integration Committee in, in March. We're very, very clear that we want the, the governing bodies to come around the table and look at solutions. Unfortunately, over the last three months, we've, we've heard very little feedback out from that they're in this process of integration. And until that is complete, it's going to be very difficult or they won't engage in designing a female charter. So, you know, that's a key message that the players took back this week when we got on captain's calls and we were reported back to the players and the challenges that they're faced and and what was the response we got from presenting the state of play reports the players are very strong we need to get on the pitch we need to find a solution to address minimum standards for 2024 and we heard some of the the girls speaking there just about different examples that they face within their inter-county setups some of them really quite shocking like vicky wall just spoke to me there about getting no expenses whatsoever in terms of travel um I know I was shocked with that that they you know the senior inter-county champions not that the seniors should get it and the junior shouldn't but if they're not getting it it must show you that maybe the intermediate senior other senior teams and junior really must be in, in a, a really bad state yeah look absolutely obviously I've engaged heavily with the Cavan um football team and the Camogie um, team, senior team, who addressed and just demonstrated the standards that they had in place. And there's absolutely no doubt about it. There's players in those squads that opted not to play. So it's a real education piece, I think, for male players, and we're learning all the time. We're one GPA now at the moment, so when we have rep days, when we have our AGMs, it's male and female players coming together. And we're at, now the female players know exactly what the, the, the men are getting in terms of minimum standards. This isn't looking, this isn't a professional game, it's an amateur game. The ask here is that if a player is good enough to represent their county and that's their chosen sport, 
you know, they're not going playing soccer, they're not playing rugby, they're choosing Gaelic games, that the financial prowess of their parents or having a part-time job, can they afford to play the inter-county game? That's not a question that we should be considering if we're playing the game for male or female players. We just want players to be reimbursed for their travel cost, to be reimbursed for going to see a physiotherapist, to have the minimum standards in place that anybody that's good enough to represent their club and then go on to represent their county, that they can go and play with their county. And what happens now? Say that they the LGFA come back, the Camogie Association come back and say, we can't put that bill, Like we financially we can't do it. We have to wait till the integration. But as you said, the integration could be five years away maybe. We, we don't know at this moment in time. Yeah, look, the players are getting on calls now weekly, asking for updates um, on you know on the issues. Are they being addressed? You know, the, we have to remember that the membership voted for for integration and equal investment, equal recognition, and equal opportunity 18 months ago. So the people on the ground expected absolutely that this this has moved along. But in tandem with that, of course, you can Im- implement in initiatives to alleviate the concerns of players. We do that all the time. So it's really important that in tandem with the integration progress and if there's good progress being made that these these concerns are addressed and we get in the room we start talking about solutions so the next steps you know players will be looking you know the the championship games over the coming weeks what actions they can take um, and you know that'll be a decision by the players and and and, and as a representative of the player I'll, I'll definitely lead that have you been surprised maybe with some of the findings when you listen to the girls and the stories they tell? Yeah, and that's why, you know, we did that study, you know, to really get the objective data. This isn't opinions or this isn't stories. This is actually real data that shows how many players uh, have access to a doctor, how many players are fronting the bill for physio or expenses outside of training. You know, I think the stat was the average stat was 220 euros. Like nearly half the membership in the female side are students. They don't have that, those resources to front the bills or they're asking their parents so you you know absolutely you know can't believe some of the standards and the gap in standards and particularly you know we had the senior captains here today but if we had the junior and intermediate captains they would have even given they would have given examples that would you know really you know it's just not good enough in today's day and age you know the minimum standards needs to be met great tom thanks for your time today thanks ashton chloe could you tell us a little bit about why you're here today yeah, so um, all intercounty female players, uh, both Camogie and LGFA, have come together today to address um, some huge discrepancies or issues with, um, I suppose, the standards um, of intercounty or playing for your county uh, in 2023. Um, at the moment, uh, there is no unified or uniform standard um, of SNC, nutrition, travel expenses gear, anything like that between county to county or even within your own county from year to year. And what we are looking for is the three NGBs, the GA, LGFA and Camogie Association to come together, sit in a room, um, listen to our concerns or issues to try come up with a minimum standards charter um, so that I suppose you can raise the standards and expectations of the game of Camogie and ladies Gaelic football. Um, at the moment, it's very much a sort it yourself. The county board hands are tied, um, they're restrained in terms of what they can do, it needs to come from the top down. Um, I suppose our, we're incredibly frustrated, there's just nobody listening to us, mm-hmm. nothing has been done. Um, like if there was some sort of pace to some sort of positive change, we'd be okay with that, but there is nothing. Um, so we need them to come into a room, um, or else, I suppose we have said it today, we don't want this to happen, but it could come to, we are playing the 2023 under protest, what that will look like. Um, will be fleshed out in the next couple of days unless we get some positive feedback from the GA, the Ladies Gaelic Football and uh, the Camogie Association. Um, I suppose just from the point of people think wait till you're integrated, that's just too formal for us in terms of that mightn't happen for and uh, you know however many years. Mm. This is something that could actually be done in 2024 where the three could actually work together and trial it and go let's see how we work together on this. Is this something and it is totally achievable. We are not asking for something that's that's never going to be achieved. This is a totally achievable document that can be created where you can help county boards, you can help female Gaelic uh, players. Like there's a facade, I, I said it earlier, there's a facade at the moment that female Gaelic games on the way up or female sports on the way up. It is, but like if you actually get to nitty gritty of it, some of the stories you heard today, it's, it's not like, you know, mm-hmm. I'm asking, I'm going into schools, we're talking to club, talking to young girls, asking them to come in and you want to play for your county, but actually how okay do I feel with telling people to come into environments where 
Um, we don't have access to the team doctor. Um, some counties don't have SNC. They have no nutritionist. They don't know, not educated about their food. Um, it really comes down to just player well-being then at, at the end of the day. Can you give us some examples of why you thought it was important to do this today? Yeah, so even just like we're, like we're standing with the likes of Cavan and Kildare, like Kildare can't um, feel like it's 2023 and or, you know, Kildare won't be able to feel the Camogie team. It's, it's disgraceful, like it's not, that's um, abysmal stuff really. And Cavan wanted to, these are just examples now, Cavan wanted to try get girls coming from college who find it hard to al- already have a part-time job if you're asking to play for your, your county. Um, they wanted just to give them some travel expenses just, just to pay for their a part of their mileage, not even all of it, um, that couldn't be achieved. We have girls paying for their own surgeries, they're out of pocket, people asking for money um, to be able to go to a physio, to be able to pay for these surgeries, um, people aren't educated about their food, you're going into you know all sorts with that, when tr- especially for women in sport. Um, we have facilities, we have, there's people who don't have a pitch to train on, they don't know where their game is two days out from a championship match. like. The, and, you know the list goes on and you could you could nearly spend the whole morning talking to all um, who's up on stage this morning they'd all have four or five stories for you um, so look we're looking for all that has to come to an end um, I don't feel comfortable going around to schools uh, to young girls to tell them to play for your county when you don't know what you're going to get when you get into it and I think it's very important to say like for my own county they've done really really well this year um, it's been ebbing and flowing throughout the years but that's it's important that it's a unified stance um, that there's other counties who, who aren't maybe as lucky as what we, for the most part, get in Clare.